Last episode was all about getting Tanga ready for the boatyard. What we thought would be a two-week, you know, haul out ended up to be a lot longer than we thought. Hey everyone, we're the Carmina family from Victoria, BC, Canada. Last year, we decided it would be a great idea to move on to a boat, but not just any boat. We found a 1969 Stevens Brothers aluminum boat that needed a lot, and I mean a lot of love. Of course, we decided it'd be fun to make all the repairs and do the refit ourselves. After 19 years of marriage, this may be the end of us. Join us on our adventures cruise in the Pacific Northwest and getting Tango Rota ready for a massive trip around the world. Are you having fun yet? Oh yeah. You know how much oh. I'm Oh my gosh, Blaine. That was some stinky water in there. Maybe it was Mexican water. One of the first things to do when we're out of the water is to break all the blisters to make the blasting that much easier. And then it was time to start blasting. What we thought would be three days and you know around $12,000 ended up to be a lot longer and a lot more. Looks good. We don't know what was going on in 1969, but there was a half inch to an inch of filler on the entire hall of Tangaroa. This is what made the blasting take so long. To be honest, blasting is not a fun experience. There was sand everywhere, it was loud all the time with the machine going, and everything was just dirty, and it took forever. Um, I think we thought that it would be a lot quicker than it was, but we were very torn whether grinding was faster or whether we just keep blasting. Oh, and it's very expensive. Oh, bakery. Mm, you got a soft spot. You do. What are you getting over here? Of course, we did take a break every so often to feed Blaine's addiction to baked goods. Good morning, day three of the yard. How are you doing, Blaine? Tired. What happened last night? I spent the better part of between 1.30 in the morning and 8.30 in the morning dealing with tarps last night. I hate tarps. Tarps are the bone that hurts. The bones. They were blowing so much. And my eyes, check them out. From being a safety guy, all the sand's in them. And I think it did, they spent last night just trying to get the sand because it's so gritty now. But yeah, that's day three. I'd well, be perfectly happy if I never saw another tarp in my life. <laughs> but yeah, we're off to day three. Let's do this. Yeah, 
about to dissolve for a bit and then walk into it. Bye bye, barnacles! Is that amazing? And they're still dissolving. When it's too windy for the blasting guy to work and the tarp is actually pushing against him and moving his scaffolding, we move to the other side because then the tarp is billowing out. Here's a duck in a travel lift. A duck pooped in the travel lift. What are those things you just took out? Uh, the stabilizer shafts. It's a port and starboard. You can see the. Uh, oh, look at that! That's the, the what's left of the packing. <laughs> so that'll uh, we'll repack them and uh, put them back in again. You gonna get the guy to blast them? Uh, not the shafts, but I'll have him probably do the the top okay. portions just to clean up. That's all bronze up top. It's not as quite as big of a deal, but that post that was down below is uh, looks like cast iron. Cast so, iron. Yeah, so we'll have to have them blast that. And then we'll epoxy coat it and then uh, reseal it and put it back in again. Paint it white or just leave it? Uh, paint it white. So. Yay, stabilizers are out. Yes, well, I still have the hard part on that stabilizer to do. So here's the stabilizer parts that Belaine was talking about, the cast iron ones that needed to be blasted. And then I painted them with epoxy barrier and some white paint. The main engine sea strainers were also in rough shape, so we got them blasted and cleaned them up, ready to install them back into Tangaroa. The one good thing about not having the kids with us in the yard is we got to eat what we like. Morning it is day, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, four at the yard. And let's show you where you're at. Slowly coming off and the starboard side is the same way is it making me clean these things ah. so it's muriatic acid with a little bit of water and look at the difference That's before, before and after. after and then there were the shaft logs we'll cover that in a later video to tell you the truth we were a little bit scared on what tangro would look like with all the filler taken off but we were pleasantly surprised the welds were beautiful So I'm like, I'm on our boat, so I just need some fresh fish. That's what I will do. I'm in a yard, they'll love it. <laughs> That's perfect. I don't know, you pick the best one. <laughs> I cooked this fish in some tin foil with some lemon and everything sliced into it. And I have to say it was so yummy. It's like a very light white fish. How's it going? Are you selling tuna right now? Yeah, no one buy one. I want to be talk to me on it. Pardon? I want to talk to me, I want to buy one. I want to buy one. So, so let's go. This one is 70 bucks. 70? Yeah. How am I going to cut that? I okay. Mean, do, do you have a husband, boyfriend or whatever? Yeah. Hey everyone! So it is the first Saturday of being in the yard and I went to Steveson Market and I got a couple fish. First of all, I got this cute little red one. Yeah, I know where he is. Let's see. He's still in the bag. Anyways, the girl who sold it to me at Steveson Fish Market, she was amazing, and she told me to descale it by using the back end of a knife and keeping it in the plastic. So that's what we're gonna do tonight. He's for dinner tonight. Wrap it in barbecue or wrap it in tin foil. Put in some lemon. Put it on the barbecue. And then I splurged. And I got 
A tuna. You know how much I love tuna? Wait till you see this thing. Hold on. I'll flip, I'll flip you around. Aluminium so we don't have to every stuff. So yeah. use a saw to cut it? No, 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 I can't, but you can. Okay, I'll cut it. So you can, you can buy this stuff for, for five bucks now with 15 in Kenya tire. You can frozen and then next week another one, another one. Okay. Oh, you're going to do for me or I am? No, I can't. I can't process fish. No, then don't. I'll take that. So you know, because if they discover, they kick me out. From the oh, we don't want for, you kicked out. For, for one year. No, we don't. This is my tuna. Excuse the dirty dishes. <coughs> Anyways, I got a tuna. Look at him. It's the size of my hand. He's so big. Oh, a big fat tuna. So I got to cut him up. Said to do is, um, Oh, he had a, a wood saw and I'm like, I don't have a wood saw on the boat. So I think I'm going to take a jigsaw or something, or maybe the sawzall that'll work. And I'm going to cut a whole bunch of tuna steaks and freeze them. They're going to be so yummy. And then the guy on the dock said, this is sashimi level stuff. So, um, I don't know if it has some sashimi, but I'm thinking this fish head would make some really good fish head soup or something. I don't know. We'll figure it out. So now I'm off to saw up a tuna. Turn it like that. Ready? Is this fun? No. Hmm? No. Or not? Let's just say it didn't work very well and we had bits of tuna spread everywhere on the boat. Oh, it stank. And then we were into our second week of blasting. prop puller i'm just working on getting the spurs off now because we're gonna have to get a plate puller in behind this is not so much of an issue but that one the spurs are right behind the prop yeah i'm not entirely sure why it's yeah, sharpen like, those spurs it's almost like that prop is farther in than what this one is hmm. so It'd be good to get those off yeah so yeah you can see where the the prop's got a bing in it right here Whee! i don't think that was us Nope. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. That's a good one. Yeah, so, well, seeing as I don't recall hitting anything or hearing anything, I'm nope. sure that's. This one's actually not bad. It's only got the one whoopsie. This one's got. Like, well, that's a good the, whoopsie. See the whole blades folded there? Yeah. And then I think the. Uh, there's more than one. Like, that's got a little bit of a. You can see a little mm -hmm. whoopsie there. It's like this one's got a bit of a hmm. bow over. So this one's, uh, this one's seen some better days. Better days. I'm not sure if that's part of the. It's been to war and back design. again. Uh, seeing as this one does not have that curve, I'm going to say that that is not supposed to be like that. <laughs> cool. So my guess is, is it must have been a log or something because there's no dents in the. the no, it's the not edge like a rock. Blade. It wasn't like it hit a rock. So whatever it was, it was something soft that it, it hit. Oh, there's a lot of logs, logs up in Alaska. Yeah. Okay, we'll keep going. I am. We had to heat everything up, so we got the welders to give us a hand. And that helped us get the props off. Something's missing. You got the rudder out. It's so small, a little baby rudder. Big boat, baby rudder. Another baby rudder. I'll uh, likely be enlarging them at some point, but not, not this, this trip, visit. right? Nope, not this visit. Not this visit. Lane, are you ready no. to get rid of the couch? This couch had been on our deck for about two months, and we had no clue how we were going to get it off the boat. Okay, what do you want me to do? One, two, three. That worked. Yep. The couch is off the boat. Good job.
job, Lane. And then it was back to breaking bubbles and getting as much paint off as we can to try and make this blasting a little bit faster. So in the process of removing the uh, shafts, props and everything, I noticed that the, um, the, the starboard prop was farther back in the, in the uh, strut than what the port one was. So um, I have to remove the shafts anyway, so I kind of did a little bit more re looking into it. And uh, this is the, oh, let me flip you around here. This is the starboard shaft coupling to the engine. Actually, one nice thing that this boat had was um, drive savers, so that's just a plastic coupler. Um, but anyway, the starboard shaft was in the process of exiting stage left, or maybe I should say exiting stage right. Um, it had all the set screws in it, um, so that, that wasn't an issue, but uh, it was sliding backwards in the coupler. Um, very not good. So glad we caught that in time. Glad we managed to get hauled out because uh, that would have been a probably very expensive issue. Um, uh, possibly, well not possibly, likely even boat threatening because if that goes then your, your shaft, uh, I mean it would have hit the rudder but the shaft seal would have been damaged along with that. So we would have been getting her in through the the shaft seal. So I'm going to work on getting that guy off because he's uh, he's a, a pretty big coupler and I've got to do that one as well as that one. You can see how much farther that one is. Uh, that's a little bit deceiving because I was um, I was uh, hitting the shaft to get the the rudder off or sorry the, the propeller off so I think it just slid a little bit forward in the coupler but um, but you can see the difference anyway between that side and, and the other side. So you have all sorts of stuff to do in the boat yard. So we carry on. I was just playing with the anchor because uh, we're going to send it out and have it regalvanized. And uh, I never actually really looked at these anchors before. And uh, I found out that it's uh, they're actually two piece. It just comes apart just like that. Then you have two pieces that are much easier to heft around. And it's just the chain keeps it from coming through the other way. That was our first week in the yard, or maybe a couple weeks. Join us next time when we continue to get all the paint off this boat and we have a little bit of fun with Bondo. Thanks for watching and please don't hesitate to subscribe. Also hit that little bell button because we're not on a regular schedule right now for getting our videos out and I want to make sure that you guys don't miss any one of them.